Hey everybody, it's Nick Emman, founder of VolumeProfileTrader.com on Wednesday, November 14th, and I have to be honest, uh, I'm, I was looking for a bottom uh, in this market around this 1360 level, basically this big volume clump, um, and it didn't work out. Clearly, clearly, the fiscal cliff has way more pressure on the market than what we thought. The idea that Taxes may be going up or will probably be going up and the market participants are going to take profits now. That's leaning on this market and it's proving to be a burden and buying is not the right idea. So I have to be honest and say back on October 6th, actually October 5th, um, there was a point in this market where I I was looking to hedge up the portfolio. I didn't think that the rally would persist and I was looking for more downside. You can see on my Twitter feed hedging my portfolio long QQQ 69 half 69 put spreads this was October 5th those that was a great trade it worked out those uh, 17 cent each put spreads ended up uh, being sold for 47 cents each so that was a great trade during the weekend update um, I say first first caution flag of this rally and sure enough what happens uh, you know we're, we're seeing a downside movement to this market so you can see month before election seeing warning signs from the NASDAQ with Apple underperforming um, my approach is, is to the markets to avoid technology or at least be underweight yes that means Google too what has happened the market has continued to slide if you want to watch that video I think I do a good job explaining of what my viewpoints were there but what am I doing here my actions have uh, neglected that viewpoint and perhaps some of the reason is because we're down to levels where the market should bounce but focusing on what's going on the fiscal fiscal cliff the market doesn't care about that does it mean that there's going to be a buying opportunity uh, you know a month down the road two months down the road when the fiscal cliff gets somewhat resolved you know what probably but right here right now the shorts are killing this market and they're they're doing a great job of persistently selling this market down longs you know just keep getting nibbled by ducks I know you know I have and I've tried and you know wrongfully so and I, I have to say the only reason that I'm staying keeping my head above water in November is because I've been day trading uh, futures NASDAQ futures and it, it's been good enough to where it's basically offset my losses in equities and uh, stubbornly you know ju I'm just not, I wasn't making the right move so overall in this market I I don't see why there's not there's a reason for more down why there isn't reason for more downside the market should continue to drift lower are we at oversold levels yeah technically we should bounce but as long as we don't and we see moves like we do today in the market there's no reason to get excited now you are I, I will say this you are still in this big volume chunk now we did pierce through uh, the point of control which I find to be a little bit troubling and I, I'm fishing for volume levels so originally I was looking basically from the point of control up to 1370 that big volume chunk to be support well it was support for two or three days and then what happens price today shows that no it's not support so now you have to go lower and lower now every time we ride against this lower Bollinger Band there's a likelihood that you'll see some type of of oversold bounce even if it's just intraday um, but you'll see something and I think that's where we're at uh, you see the ebb and flow so I'm not saying that this is just going to continue to move like it was today you'll probably see sideways consolidation but I mean honestly the, the the point is until this fiscal cliff has any type of resolution it, the market just doesn't look good at all excuse me uh, the point of control for the Nasdaq uh, down at these levels doesn't even hold a support even a bounce normally and, and I, I say this because it, it's truthful 
I mean, it's good at least for like a 10 point bounce on the S&P, you know, bouncing off the point, the 10 year point of, um, excuse me, the one year point of control. We're not even getting that. So just the idea of what's going on there uh, is really disturbing. The VIX, uh, I sent this out in stock twits today. Um, you know, this level continues, or well, is holding. We crash down to these levels. This is why I love the volatility index so much. It's because it does give you some great levels to trade off of. So it gave you a low risk opportunity to buy volatility, a.k.a. SPY puts, maybe SPY put spreads is, if that's your thing, ended up being a great trade. Now, honestly, if this market continues, uh, it, now, there, of course, you could have the, the realization that the market could trade sideways. But if there's any type of volatility in this market, you're looking at, and let me show you why. Let me zoom out a little bit. You're looking at uh, the 50% retracement back in, it looks like either April or uh, May, which is around t between 20 and 21, around 21 half or so. And then you're looking north of that towards 22 half, you know, give or take. And the reason why is because those 50% retracements are wonderful levels of support resistance in the VIX. Look at what it's done the last times, uh, the last few times. Let me get the right tool for the right job. The last few times price has come into this a 50% retracement zone for the last three or four months. Excellent levels of support resistance. So was it right to be a buyer today? You know, I did have a few day trades that ended up working out near the lows when I called it out, I, I don't know, around 2, 2.30. I don't know exactly when the time was, Eastern time. And, you know, the, some trades worked out, some trades didn't. But I'll tell you this, my last trade was a loser. It didn't work out. I got stopped out. And the market continued to drift lower. So frustration, yeah. But that just shows you, you stick with the trend until it it shows that it's no longer the trend. And I think more importantly is you realize what's going on fundamentally. The fiscal cliff, it's just going to dominate. If there's absolutely no, the market's taking us, there will be no resolution until there's a resolution. So they're not pricing in a resolution like they will with a quantitative quantitative easing with the Fed, they're saying, look, until there is a resolution, sell, sell, sell. And I think that's the main thing to take away from what's been going on. So, um, you know, Q4 started, what happened? Uh, for some reason, Wall Street was disappointed with the Obama election. Now, whether it was that or them just selling because of the fiscal cliff, you know, looking ahead, whatever you want to say, but the market took profits into the election, well, the, into the, the start of uh, Q4, and then into the election we saw a little bit of an oversold bounce after the election, big sell-off, that sell-off's continuing, and there's likely there's a likelihood that the volatility index will see north of 20 in the coming weeks just waiting for some type of resolution for um, the fiscal cliff. So keep that in mind trade accordingly and you'll be okay in the long run if, if you have a bumpy month like I'm having then you just you live you learn and you move on but I'll tell you this come December my my focus is on being on the right side of the trade and, and right now that's on the short side so that's really all I have to say for tonight uh, I hope this video is useful if you do want to watch of the volatility index training video that I put out, just go ahead and send me an email, nick at volumeprofiletrader.com. I'll send that over to you and uh, hope you enjoy it. So anyways, take care, have a great night, and I'll talk to you later.